Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Star Wars Expanded Universe, narrated by Disney, Orca and Luke's film, whichever way you slice it, Legends. Now, I was debating whether or not putting this in another video and just combining it, but I figured it deserved its own spot by itself. Um, today, we have one of the most obscure and controversial parts of the expanded universe if you decide it's part of the expanded universe um but a lot of the people i love seem to think of it as such therefore i'm just going to accept it as such that being the hungarian solo novels so this is a whole thing that you can get into or look into but essentially i think it was like the 80s and 90s Hung hungary had the rights um, to publish the Star Wars books. Um, Brian Daly's Han Solo books were very popular, so they got translated to Hungarian to be read by um, people over in that country. Um, however, uh, they decided at one point, and this is a simplified version what I'm telling you, you, you can read up on this online, but they decided to write their own fiction. Now, Lucasfilm didn't know about this for a long time. Now, remember, they, they did have publishing rights, but this was to, like, translate, not really to make their own stories, but they did. Um, and so you fans have known about them for a while, but they're all in Hungarian, so unless, unless you can read Hungarian, you wouldn't be able to enjoy any of these stories. Now, one of them, so far, has been uh, translated. The translation of the, of the book is titled Han Solo Rebel Agent. Um, or, sorry, Imperial Agent. My, my mistake, sorry. Um, this is actually the second book in a in a four-part series. These seem to be unofficial continuations of the Brian Daly books, like they're written in a similar style, which is interesting. Um, but it is an anomaly. Now you have some fans saying, well, it wasn't directly acknowledged by Lucasfilm, so does it count? On the other hand, at least from what I read of this book, nothing is inherently contradictory. Therefore, it's totally acceptable to be canon to the Legends timeline. And more stories with Han and Chewie is always a good time, especially if you know what happens down the line, that the longer you can stay with these characters, the better. Um, but, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Um... I don't think it's written quite as well as Brian Daly's books. Like, there are times where Han Solo feels exactly like himself. Other times where I don't know if he is. Um, and the writing style, I don't know if it's just because it's a translation, but it can be a little iffy at times. That being said, I think this literally may be the best we've gotten out of Chewbacca. Not even kidding. Like, he has so much character in here. Like, yeah, we all love Chewie, but he's kind of just, he's there. He's the bro. But he was a lot of fun in this one. Um, and so, I don't want to tell you too much about it. I think it's an experience just to read it for yourself. Um, but I did think it was really good. And I, I can't speak to the rest of the series because those haven't been translated yet. And I don't speak Hungarian. But the second book was fine. doesn't seem to contradict anything in the EU. Now, whether or not the other three books do is yet to be determined, because they haven't been translated yet. But as for this one, it's just a one-off story anyway. The only thing I can see is in the first couple chapters. It talks about something that I've never heard about from a Han Solo story, which I imagine is the first book, which just hasn't been translated yet. Something about nomads. I don't know. We'll see when it's translated. But yeah, I thought... This book was, was absolutely splendid. It was a lot of fun. I wanted to highlight just a few moments that stuck out. Mainly it was just two. 
and I think Matt Wilkins has also talked about it, but it was so a while ago that I watched his review. But I do remember him mentioning this. There's a scene where this guy challenges Han Solo to a duel, but you're only allowed to use swords, right? You can't use a gun or a blaster. And it, it gave me big Temple of Doom vibes from Indiana Jones. Like, it felt like that, except reverse. Because in that scene, the guy is, like, doing the tricks with the sword, and then Han Solo just shoots him. Or... Indiana Jones just shoots him. And that's the end of the scene. I said Han Solo, I'm sorry. Ugh, man. But in this scene... Because Han's not like a sword guy. He uses blasters and stuff. But so he he picks up like this dagger and chucks at the guy's chest. And the guy falls over over dead. And he goes over to the people that are watching the fight. And he's like, does it count? Do I win? And I just, I thought that was so great. There's a lot of good scenes with Chewie too. Nothing in particular that like truly stands out. But there's so many, because Chewie doesn't talk, right? Or at least we, we're not supposed to understand him. But there's a lot of things that he does with his face or does with his movements where it's just really funny. Um, there are sections in this book where Han isn't even like in the chapter and it's Chewie and these new characters and it's it's wonderful. But the other scene, this harkens kind of back to episode four, but Han Solo pretends to be a stormtrooper. And that whole scene was a lot of fun to me. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I wanted to say uh, without getting into spoilers anyway, because it's so unique. Now you might not accept it. That's okay. If it don't hurt the continuity, then I'm going to accept it gladly, especially if Matt Wilkins, Christopher Nelson, and I mean, so many others accept it, uh, it, as canon within the EU community. It's the same way that the heart of the Jedi book, which I have, by the way. I also have a review for it, um, which not officially, right, by Lucasfilm, but, like, that one specifically was meant to come out. Whereas the Hungarian ones, they did come out. Lucasfilm just didn't know about them for the longest time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if I can accept Heart of the Jedi, I can accept this. It's, it's like, basically having a fifth book. I say fifth because there's a fourth one that hasn't been translated yet. It's like having a fifth book in the Han Solo Brian Daly trilogy, and it's just a ton of fun. It's pretty much it. It's pretty much... I'm, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. That's pretty much it, guys. Up next, I have Shadow Games by Michael Reeves, which has a character from the video games. Who is that? Not Kyle Katarn, you silly, silly people. It is... It is... Dash Rendar from Shadows of the Empire, the video game and the novel, and the comic, of course. Um, so... That's interesting. I think it's like the only other story where Dash is really a character besides Shadow of the Empire. So I'm excited to see what that has in store. Until next time, guys. May the Force be with you.